I am Shaila Francis. I'm the principal of the Vocational Training Center at NASIC. When they go for treatment to the various uh, centers, wherever they go for treatment, those doctors, they uh, refer them to the VTC for training. And our staff, we also visit those places. We also visit the uh, primary health centers where there are there is a leprosy wing. So we meet the doctors who have treated the students, who have treated these people, or probably their parents. And then the, we uh, give them the forms. The forms are filled up there. And these people, we, we feel that they're eligible for this training. Uh, they, they come to us. And once they come to us, initially we have, for the first few weeks, it is just orientation and trying to make them comfortable because it is a residential program. They don't go home, they stay with us. So we try to make them comfortable with us because they come from across the country. So once they come here, initially it is uh, basically an orientation to try and make them feel comfortable, have some games and sports and all kinds of activities so that they, they get into the system, they feel comfortable in the system. And once that is over, then the regular classes begin, the teachers are introduced to them and uh, they get to know their instructors, get to know all the staff and then they start their regular classes. Now, apart from te technical skills, we also train them. We also give them life skill classes where we teach them life coping skills like uh, uh, things like goal setting, confidence building, then anger management, uh, decision making. These are some of the skills we teach in life skills. So once they complete all this, at the end of every three months, they have a term exam. And at the end of one year, uh, it's, if it is a one year course, they have an annual exam which is conducted by the government of India because this course is recognized by the government of India. It's called the NCVT course. And uh, if it is a two year course, then they have an exam at the first year, at the end of the first year and at the end of the second year. So after the exams, then before even actually even before the exams, we have campus interviews. The industries come to the institute and interview the students and uh, place them. And as soon as they complete the exams, in fact, even before they can receive their results, they are placed in various industries. And about 85% of our students are placed usually. Uh, the only problem is sometimes they don't want to go away from their home. They're not uh, comfortable moving away from their homes. So after training, they prefer jobs closer to home. So in that case, the salaries may not be as we expected because when you go closer home, then you have to accept the salary which is offered to you. But if they're ready to move to bigger cities, then we can get a better salary for them. We can bargain a better salary for them. There are people who start with some 12,000 onwards and above as a first salary. And uh, during, our, during their stay at the VTCs, we also have like uh, other uh, training modes like we take them to industries we have in plant training where for a month they go and work in an industry so they get an hands-on experience working in an industry so they are prepared the industry prepared by the time they move out from the vtc so when they complete the training uh, 85 percent of them are placed in fact placement is offered to all the hundred percent it's just that some of them are not willing to join immediately so they take some time to join and otherwise there is placement. We have a good record with industries. We have a good rapport with industries. And because of the reputation of the VTCs, that is, they know that the students live here. So there is discipline and uh, they have gone through the courses. They have gone through various uh, uh, training apart from technical skills. So there is a preference for our students in the industries. Uh, here we have different courses, that is we have uh, courses like diesel mechanic, uh, motor mechanic, then we have uh, welding, computer operators course, we have printing technology, electricians course, tailoring, beautician and two and three wheelers. These are the various courses we offer and we also once or twice a week we have classes wherein they learn some uh, functional English, we teach them because most of them are from a rural background. So we teach them functional English so that they can manage when they go for interviews. They'll be able to say a few things about, uh, I mean, uh, communicate with those people. So we have functional English classes and we also have IT for all, information technology. So all of them know how to operate the computer by the end of their, their course.
I am reminded of a person who came from the south of India, and uh, initially he was uh, he had completed his class ten. His father's his parents are affected by leprosy, and they were working in the leprosy hospital there. And he was waiting for his father to retire so that he can get that job. And he was just doing farm labor. He was working as a farm labor, and uh, it happened that somebody visited that hospital and they saw him. So they asked him, "Why don't you go for training? Why don't you go to VTC for training?" And he says that he did not have enough money to even travel to Nasik. So the neighbors and their friends contributed, and with that money he came to Nasik. He studied here for a year. He did printing technology, and after that he started working for some time. But he always wanted to be an entrepreneur. He did never wanted to work under anyone. So he started his own company. He started his own printing press. And after that, he got into various other. He diversified his business, and now he's doing extremely well and living in Pune, and uh, doing extremely well. I mean, it's a pleasure to see when they come for the alumni meeting, driving in in you know uh, high-end cars. So that is the kind of transformation in the life. One of the challenges is initially when they come to us. because most of many of them come from colonies in india we have leprosy colonies where all the leprosy affected live together in one uh, community so they are used to roaming around in that uh, in the colony and uh, there is no discrimination there is no i mean they are among themselves among the others who are affected by leprosy so when they come out from that colony and start living here there is a lot of self stigma initially they feel that you know that uh, they are not wanted or they feel that uh, they are not equal to the others Th there is a lot of self stigma so it takes some time for us to counsel them and talk to them and you know get them to come out of that uh, stigma and sometimes some of them drop out because of this they feel homesick and they cannot uh, go around as they were doing earlier like that is they used to get up whenever they feel like and they were into drugs and uh, alcohol and all kinds of things when they in the, when they live in the colonies so when they come here there is no access to these things so they find it difficult to continue their studies here so some of them drop out because of this and that is a huge challenge to get them to adjust to this environment it's a totally different environment because they are they are living in colonies where all are most of them are affected by leprosy and there is no discipline it is like you know you just get up whenever you feel like do whatever you like just roam around and parents beg and somehow manage to give them three times meal and that's the type of life they are used to so when they come to us and that getting up in the morning and doing your own work and all that and studying from 9 to 5 these things are a challenge to them so because of that there is a dropout so it takes a lot of effort lot of counseling for us to talk to them and make them remain here to retain them so initially the the first few months are a challenge to retain the students because most of them want to go back to their homes and that is a huge challenge the second challenge is women women coming out of the community is very difficult in india in india you know that you have this uh, society where girls are not sent out of their homes so we get very few girls very few parents who are willing to send their girls far from home to study or to get educated for them it is like the ultimate aim is to get them married to find a boy and get them married so after 10th in the local schools we have government schools locally so they go to schools locally and after they class 10 they are kept at home till they find a good match and not a good match actually any match and get them married and that is their aim in life so for us it takes a lot of counseling we go visiting door to door what we do is we get their numbers we get their addresses from the uh, person in charge of leprosy affected in that uh, primary health center and our staff go from door to door visiting these people so we do a lot of counseling to get these girls to come here we try to make them understand the benefit of uh, getting uh, trained and finding a job and then you know we also take some some of our old students from of our, some of our past students who have been successful in life yes, girls especially we take them along so that they can talk to them and convince them that there is a benefit in coming here for uh, training and after training when they start working it is a much better life than without training and just getting married to somebody so that's a huge challenge